today we're going to be looking at sharing some resources around video editing and doing a little demonstration uh, and kind of like a video editing boot camp for all of you. And <clears throat> excuse me, um, just to give you a heads up, I'm running multiple devices right now. So I have you know three computers going. So um, if I have any tech problems, I'm sure I'll be able to troubleshoot it, but just be patient as I'm switching between things because I will be doing a live demo. Um, this session came about largely uh, because of the feedback that we were getting and some of the requests that we were getting to the IT team um, asking if we could help support teachers in editing videos. Um, so as I was saying, we, we saw that there was a large uh, increase in the number of people that were wanting this sort of support. So I hope that this session um, can, make, can help uh, support you and what you're doing and teach you a little bit about video editing so that you can begin using some of the applications that are probably already on your computer that you might not be familiar with. So let's look at what we're going to be going through today. Our plan for the day is to review some of the options. Um, I have a feeling most of the people in this room right now are Mac users. Um, and if that's the case, we'll be actually doing the demonstration on uh, iMovie. So that's something that everyone should already have installed. If you are using a Windows computer, that's OK. I also use Windows uh, to edit videos primarily, actually. So I will be sharing um, some resources for you and some options uh, if you want to be editing on your Windows computer. I'll be sharing a lot of learning resources, uh, places where you can go to get support on um, specific uh, strategies or uh, features. I'll also be giving you a great resource that was originally intended for students, and I found myself sharing it more and more with our teachers. And that will have a lot of links to uh, copyright-free or royalty-free resources that you could begin using in your videos. I'll be doing the live demo, and then I'm hoping to wrap it up with some questions and answers. And if you have any questions as we're going through, first thing I want to uh, just bring to your attention here, um, and this is an interesting t statistic from 2018, and that is that the average video length that we see online is 4.7 minutes. Um, and if you looked at the data in 2017, videos were longer on average by one third. So thinking now about the year 2020, um, the average length of videos has dropped down to a little above two minutes. And what that means is, well, you could go into a lot of um, you know, speculation on what that means about our society. But I think that the takeaway here for us is we need to be looking at how we can tighten up the content that we're creating, the video content, so that it is engaging, so that it is bite-sized, so that it is um, able to be understood and appreciated by our students. Um, and not something that is excessive in length, unnecessarily long, um, where our students can tune out. And I am definitely guilty of doing just that. I know that because I looked at my Loom account, and I looked at many of the video tutorials that I have created for my students. And if you're looking at the, at the slides right now, you'll see that you know six minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, um, one of them was 19 minutes long. And so, yes, my students can go and they can watch it in double speed. But what is more effective and more efficient would be for me to download that video and to edit it into smaller pieces, uh, to chunk that so that it's uh, more appropriate for this online learning environment. And again, if you look at any of the research around cognitive load, and I'm, many of us have been talking about this, uh, especially those that have taken the online academy course um, about designing for online learning. They talk uh, quite frequently about how you need to reduce the length of your videos when you are sharing those with your students. Uh, and this is the same for adult learners. So I know that the videos that we're recording, for example, the one right now, is going to be a 30 minute long video. So really, if I show that to someone, it might not be as effective as if I break that down into smaller pieces, um, which is something that we'll likely do at the end of this virtual learning time is go back and tighten up and edit many of those videos to make them um, more focused on the outcomes that I want people to, to have when they finish viewing the videos. So let's move on to what are some of the available tools. I'm going to leave this slide up for a little bit. Um, this whole presentation I will share with you on the virtual learning slides as well. So the links in there you'll be able to click on. 
Um, but I want to just step through what are the four options. These, these are the same four options that I've shared with my uh, eighth grade students as they're engaging in their video editing project right now. So everyone that has a Mac computer has iMovie installed by default. And that is going to be the application that I'm going to be walking you through in our demo. iMovie is wonderful for beginners. It's uh, quite a powerful tool when you begin to look underneath the surface at some of the features that do exist there. If you are interested or you have some familiarity with video editing and you want to move on to something more advanced, Final Cut Pro is what I would personally use on the Mac. Um, and it has a 90 day free trial currently during COVID. If you are using a Windows computer, then by default, your Windows computer will have a video editing software if you have Windows 10. Um, and that is just called, uh, you can just press on the Windows key and type in video editor and it will pop up. It is very basic. Um, if you're looking for something more advanced on Windows, then you can uh, check out my recommendation, which is called DaVinci Resolve, and that is 100% free. So. We have had previous sessions uh, during virtual learning on editing videos using mobile devices. So while there are many mobile applications that you can edit videos on your phone, that's not going to be the focus for today. We're looking at editing on your computer. Does anybody have any other video editing software that they have used before that they want to just pop into the chat and share? GarageBand, yep. So yeah, GarageBand is great for editing audio, especially, right? If you wanted to create a narration for your video, you wanted to edit, yeah, Adobe Premiere. I've used Adobe Premiere as well. Adobe Premiere is fantastic. I think the biggest uh, drawback there is the price tag of all Adobe's, right? Quick on Android, exactly. Great for um, editing fast, beautiful, engaging videos, but you don't maybe have as much control. The one on Google, do you know what it's called, Hiro? But yeah, Marla, I would say iMovie is going to meet pretty much 95% of everyone's needs, and it's very easy to learn. So that brings me into our next section here, which is going to be on some of the learning resources. Now, if you saw my virtual learning email on Sunday or Monday that I sent out, I talked about some of the online certifications that exist out there that teachers are able to complete and work towards. One of them is the Apple Teacher Program. And that is a very basic, simple, um, probably would take you about eight to 10 hours, uh, depending on your comfort level, of completing some online uh, questions or quizzes and demonstrating your understanding of various Apple products. And they award you with this Apple Teacher Badge. Inside of that uh, website, and I'm going to put this link. Let me see if I can just copy this link. Uh, I'll share it later. Uh, but if you want, you can just open it up right now. If you sign in with your Apple ID, they have a lot of learning resources tailored for teachers to help them better use their products. And so if you visit the website and you go to learn skills for Mac, you're going to find that they have a whole section for iMovie. So within that, they have um, very basic tutorials for a whole range of uh, tools that you need to understand how to use to create effective movies using iMovie. And you can see those on the right hand side there. So the basics of iMovie is the first one. It goes on to trimming, transitions, adding photos, adding titles, audio, overlays, even doing green screen and then putting adjustments, effects, and then eventually sharing your film. So if you have an opportunity, you can step through that and you can actually complete all of that and you can get your iMovie Apple Teacher badge. Um, so if you log in to the Apple Teacher website, Marla, um, it's all organized based on the different uh, products. And there's one uh, section that is an overview of using your Mac computer. So they have badges for the iPad and they have badges for the Mac. And you can work through those at your own pace. Um, but I just wanted to share that as a resource because they even have um, lesson plans and uh, scaffolds designed to help your students engage with those tools as well. 
So if you were to click on, for example, the one for uh, adding a green screen effect into your iMovie, then it would have, uh, again, as you can see in my screen, a very simple layout. So I, again, I do encourage you to check that out. Um, one other resource I'm going to share, and this one I already have the link, so I'm going to put this in the chat. This bit.ly is going to open up a Google document that has a ton of resources related to graphic design, video editing, um, has a custom fonts that you can download, the types of things that you might use um, if you were going to create any sort of media, whether it's um, um, video content or infographics, um, or promotional videos, whatever it might be. We created this for our students, our middle school students, but I've been finding myself sharing it more and more with teachers. So definitely check that out. So one of the tools that I use from that list uh, for this demo today is I used uh, this website, Vidizi, which has um, royalty-free, uh, allowed for modification videos, stock videos that you can download. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using those stock videos during the live demonstration. So I just went on there, I searched for coronavirus, and I downloaded some clips so that I can put something together, uh, a video that will teach people how to maintain uh, hygiene or how to um, best protect themselves during this time. I also want to highlight this uh, other resource on there, which is the YouTube Audio Library. So this is a wonderful resource because it has a ton of uh, music options that you can use for any of your videos. Um, I think that we probably get a little bit tired hearing the same five songs in 90% of all the free videos that people put up online, and that's because they're all getting them from the same websites. So instead, if you go to YouTube's audio library, you can actually search and filter by the mood of the audio file, the genre, duration, and so on and so forth. No, it does not need a subscription. It's completely free. The artists who create the audio, they upload it there so that people can use those in their YouTube videos. And you just need to click on the download button on the right-hand side and you can download it and you can use it. They also have sound effects. So again, if you're working with students, that's something that they're gonna find fascinating because it really can turn a good video into a great video by adding some professional sound effects in there as well. So that's been about 15 minutes. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump onto my other computer and I'm gonna be sharing my screen there, and I'm gonna be walking you through um, the basics of iMovie, and I'm hoping that I can actually hit on all of the areas displayed on the screen right now. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna go ahead and create a movie. I'm gonna click on that link. Now, before I start adding any of my media content, I want to just explain um, what you're seeing here in terms of the windows and the layout. So the bottom here, this entire bottom area is called the timeline. And that is going to be where you're going to drag and drop your video clips, your audio files, your photos. And again, like I said, almost every video editing software out there follows a very similar layout. The timeline is something that's very universal and you're gonna find that on, in any tool. To, as I'm adding content to my timeline, I'm gonna see uh, this number here change. So on the left-hand side is where I currently am as I'm looking through my video, and on the right-hand side is the maximum duration of my video. On the upper right over here, this is my preview panel, and it also doubles as a way to um, add and modify the clips as I select them in the timeline. And I'm gonna show you what all of these buttons up here do. Over here is my media library. Right now it is completely empty, so I'm gonna be dragging in some media files to use. Up at the top, I have, again, I'm selecting right now my media, but I also have an option here to add audio from their built-in library. They have some songs and some sound effects. They also have titles, backgrounds, and transitions. 
So again, one of the great things about iMovie is that the learning curve is relatively simple. So it's easy to start using it. And as you explore it more, you're going to unlock and understand more advanced features. So let's go ahead and I'm going to, I've already downloaded some video files and an audio file. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it straight in. And I'm going to drop it into my media library. I'm just going to import it this way. So let me go to my computer, downloads, iMovie demo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this content and I'm going to import it into my media library. OK, so as it's importing, you're going to see that they now are available. So if I take my cursor, I can skip through and I can preview it on the right over there. This is an audio file, so that's why you're seeing that it doesn't have any video. Instead, you're seeing the waveform of the audio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just dragging my clips and dropping them in. And then I'm going to begin to edit and trim them together. So as you can see, after my second clip that I've dropped in, I'm only at 25 seconds in length, but it's becoming difficult to see everything because I have to scroll to the side. So going up here, you see this uh, bar? This is the zoom. So if I pull this to the left, it's going to zoom out on my clips. That makes it easier for me to see all the ones that I've added. I'm just going to continue to drop them in. Picture can be uh, any duration that you want. So I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit. I'm going to drop this clip above. And then I'm going to bring my audio file down and put it underneath. OK. Are we good so far? Were you able to follow all of that? All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about trimming. So if I look at a clip like this one right here, I can see that it's 15 seconds long. If I want to reduce that to 10 seconds, I simply grab the edges and I can drag it down and reduce the duration to 10 seconds. Another thing I want to point out here is there are going to be times where you actually want to cut your clip or split your clip. So what that means is if I know that this clip is 10 seconds, but at the five second mark, I actually want to cut the clip in half and I want to have something in between that. Then what you can do is you go to modify and you can split the clip. And now it's going to become two separate clips that I can work with independently. You can also cut a clip or trim it based on where you currently are when you're viewing your video. So this right here is called the playhead. So if I'm watching my video, I'm going to click somewhere. I'm going to press the space bar. I'm watching my video. And then when I get to a certain point, I'm going to press space bar again. And if I go to modify, I can trim to playhead. And that's going to reduce the duration of that clip. The next thing I want to show you <clears throat> is how to use transitions. So if you go to the transitions tab here, you can view all the available transitions. So this is the uh, transitions panel. Now you can actually see it. So what I was going to say is uh, people tend to go a little bit overboard when using transitions. Um, and it's really my suggestion that you keep it simple. So I would say the cross dissolve, the cross blur, fade to black and fade to white are probably all you need to use in most cases. The others are great if you have a specific reason for why you're choosing something a little more uh, bold. Or you know, if you're making a Star Wars film, they're pretty famous for using some of these dramatic transitions. But I'm just going to use Cross Dissolve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it. And when you drag it down, you can drag it in between the clips 
And what that's going to do is it's going to apply the transition. You can put one at the beginning as well. And so on. Until you have a smooth transition in between all of the content. I'm going to reduce the duration of some of these so that my video is shorter. There we go. Any questions on transitions? If you want to increase the duration of the transition, you can also double click on it and you can modify this time. So by default, it's one second. You can change that and you can apply that to all of them. So I've already shown you how I can add a photo. I added this uh, image. So images are added in the exact same way um, as videos. You just drag them into the timeline and then you set the duration for them as well. Let's add a title slide. So the same mechanic as it is for transitions, it works for titles and for backgrounds. So if I go here, I can click on one of these titles. And I can preview what it looks like before I add it. Now using this, I'm going to pull it onto my clip and you can see that it's being uh, placed above. And then while looking at the clip, I can double clip, double click and say, I can modify the size and then I can go back to the beginning and I can press space bar and I can preview what that looks like. All right. Backgrounds is also interesting. I'm not going to go into backgrounds too much, but you're welcome to explore that. Especially, I think the, the map options here are quite nice if you're making a video. Um, you can change the cities on the map. So if you were making something for your students, um, especially now during virtual learning, where you have teams spread out all over the world, it'd be really cool to put something together for your kids, um, showing how the teachers are located in different countries and different cities um, and how they're working together to um, still provide the best learning experience as possible. All right, let's move on to um, audio. So if I go down here, this is my audio clip. And I'm not sure if you can notice, but um, it goes from green to yellow to red. Now, I'm not an audio person. I'm sure David could tell you a lot more about you know, the, the reasons behind this, but the general rule of thumb is you don't want your audio clips to ever be in the red. And what that means is right now, this song is probably a little bit too loud. And if, if the audio clips do go up into the red, then what that means is you can uh, have some feedback in the headphones. Um, it could sound really bad on large speakers. And you've probably heard a video that had audio that wasn't properly adjusted before and you know what a uh, difficult experience that can be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this line and I'm gonna drag it down a little bit so that my audio is a little bit quieter and it's not gonna run the risk of um, making some crackling or bursting into someone's headphones. One of the requests I get most frequently from teachers is they want to do some sort of overlay or green screen. So I will be showing you how to do that. And what I've done is I've taken this clip here and I've placed it on top of the background that I want um, to be visible once I remove the blue screen. So by clicking here on this clip and I go up to these tools up here at the top, video overlay setting. If I click on video overlay setting, I have a couple options here. I can do a cutaway. And that means basically that I could um, uh, put a smaller video or image on top of another. Um, I can do green or blue screen. Split screen videos, that's another request that we've been seeing a lot. And picture in picture. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the green blue screen, select that. And as soon as I do that, it will give me an automatic um, adjustment as it attempts to do the blue screen or green screen for me. So as you can see, it's not perfect. It needs to be adjusted. And that's because we can see through our medical professional here, which is not what we intend. So going up to the top, there are some settings that you can modify. The first is softness. So you can play around with that and see what that looks like, right? The softer I make it, the more invisible she is. If I drag that all the way down, it's not bad. It's maybe a little bit see-through here, but it's getting better. The second thing you can do is you can clean up an area. So if I click on this eraser, yeah, it looks like she's still a little bit invisible, which is not quite what I want. But I think it has more to do with the color of her scrubs and how they probably are not the best colored scrubs to be against a blue background. But if I go here and press spacebar, you can see what it looks like. So very quick and easy to put two, a video or two pictures on top of one another and remove either the color green or the color blue. And it's important to note that in iMovie, those are your two uh, options really, is green or blue. So I would not suggest trying to add um, videos or pictures with a different colored background than one of those two. If you're using a tool like Final Cut Pro, you do have more control over those options there. Um, we're all, we are actually a little bit over time. So let me real quick just show you the last few things. The first one is going to be adjustments. So clicking on a movie clip, if I go to the top here, clicking on this magic wand, by the way, is a very easy way, um, especially for beginners, to get the best looking light um, and uh, balance of color in their clips. So if you click on that, it will automatically adjust the clip for you. If you're not satisfied or happy with that, then I suggest you go in and you can begin to directly modify some of these settings to adjust the color. You can also adjust the crop. You can remove a uh, shaky video by using the stabilize feature. So just selecting this will stabilize video. You can also speed up or slow down video clips. And finally, you can apply a filter. So if I click on clip filter, then I see a preview of all of the possible filters that I can place. And if I click on one, then now my video clip is going to have a filter on it. Once you are finished with your video and you click on the share option, some people get a little confused about the available options here. My recommendation is almost all the time, unless you have very little storage space, that you export to a file. So if I click on this option here, it's going to pull up a window. I can name my video. I can choose the quality of the video, so 1080p. I can see the file size. And once I'm ready to export it, I click on Next, and it's going to begin the export process. This usually takes a little bit of time. During this time, you should not close your device. You should leave it open, and you should make sure that it's plugged in and charging. Once it's exported as a file, then you can drag that into Google Drive to upload it, or if you wanted to, you could upload it to YouTube. Um, but my, my recommendation generally is don't go with the direct upload to YouTube option unless you're really familiar with that, and instead export to file. Uh, again, if you're using iMovie, please go and check out the Apple uh, teacher resources because they have some very, very simple um, instructions there to help you out.